Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking at a very controversial ethical debate and that is abortion. Interesting. Now, abortion is defined as the termination of a fetus in a woman's womb, either by an operation or some sort of medication. So essentially you are stopping an unwanted pregnancy. Yes. Here in the UK, the law states that a woman has the right to an abortion within 24 weeks of conception. So the average pregnancy lasts nine months. You can legally terminate the pregnancy up to around five and a half months. I see. The abortion debate is a fierce debate in our current society. On the one side, you have pro-choice. This is the belief that women should have complete autonomy over their own bodies. And because a fetus is not a separate distinct entity, it is not considered a living human being and should not be given any moral weight or consideration. A fetus to the woman is still very much in her body and part of her body. And so a woman should have the choice to govern her body, meaning the choice to remove or terminate an unwanted fetus. As the saying goes, her body, her choice. I understand. The other side is pro-life. This is the belief that a fetus is a living human being and so morally it should be treated as a separate entity from the mother. It should have its own moral protection as a living human being. As murder is illegal and mostly considered immoral, so too should abortion. If the pro-life argue that a fetus is a human being, then all living human beings have a right to life. And so the mother should not then have the right to terminate the fetus. Yes, yes, I understand. Now, the abortion debate is really part of a much wider philosophical line of questioning, such as what do we consider to be a life? When should we be defined as living human beings? And when should we be protected by human rights? What is that point? I see. So let's look at this on a spectrum. On the extreme pro-life side, you have those that firmly believe life begins at conception. Right at the beginning of the pregnancy, this is a life. This is a living human being, and so it has moral weight, the right to life. And so abortion should not be morally permissible. Although there may be exceptions in certain very rare circumstances, like when the mother's life is at risk from the pregnancy. Yes, okay. On the extreme pro-choice side, you would argue that the fetus is not a living person right up until birth, until it is a physical separate entity to the mother. As long as it is inside the mother, only the mother should be given any moral weight, as the fetus is very much her body. And so an abortion should be permissible right up until birth, until the moment the baby is fully out of the mother. Right. On the moderate pro-life side, you may not necessarily consider the fetus alive at conception. You may need more criteria to consider something alive. Some may use the heartbeat as the criteria, or perhaps the first brain activity. This is somewhere around six to seven weeks into the pregnancy, so an abortion would be permissible only in the first six weeks. After that, it should not be allowed as the fetus is considered a living being. Hmm. And then we have the moderate pro-choice side. This side will argue that a fetus is alive when it becomes viable. A viable fetus means it is at a stage where it has a 50% chance of surviving outside of the mother's womb. If we are therefore at a point where the fetus has a 50% chance of surviving separate from the mother, then it should be considered a human being and so should have moral weight. On average, 50% of fetuses can live from 24 weeks onwards. So a fetus is considered viable 24 weeks into the pregnancy. Yes, yes, I understand. So interestingly enough, as I said, the law in the UK for abortion is up to 24 weeks. To the UK law, this is based around the viability argument and so sits on the moderate pro-choice side. So as far as the law is concerned, at 24 weeks, a fetus becomes alive and should be given moral status. Yes. So let's run through the spectrum and discuss. Very well. Starting with the extreme pro-life side, this does seem like the simpler solution. It can always be debated the precise point a life becomes a life. With the idea that life begins at conception, there is no gray area. It is a specific definitive point. It also makes sense logically. The moment of conception is the event that started everything off. There would be no pregnancy and so no human being without the moment of conception. This is in fact the most important point in the entire chain of events. 
it cannot be denied that conception is the beginning event in the development of a human being, and so it seems logical to say that conception is the beginning of a human being. If it is the beginning of a human being, then it is ultimately a human being. The argument makes sense, but it still has many flaws. At the beginning of a pregnancy, we are talking about a cluster of cells. Now, a human being is a breathing, moving being with a physical body. I cannot see how you can hold up a human being and then hold up a cluster of cells inside a woman and say these two are the same thing and deserve the same moral weight. Cells are not a human, they are not a baby, they are just cells, so giving cells moral consideration seems implausible. Okay fine, but these cells eventually do become human beings, so what is the definitive moment? The moderate pro-life approach seems reasonable, around the time of the first heartbeat or the first brain activity. But this is still so early on in the pregnancy that I find it hard to really take the fetus as a living being at this stage. Sure, it has a heartbeat and very early brain activity, but it is not really a sentient creature at this point. It is not conscious, it cannot feel pain or anything of the sort. To compare this to a living baby and say they are the same thing is inaccurate because we know fundamentally that a seven week fetus is not the same as a newborn baby. The fact that they are not the same means they should not be given the same moral rights. At this stage, it is reasonable to argue that it is still developing cells in the woman's body and should be treated as part of the woman's body and no more. Okay, but here is the problem on the pro-choice side. On the extreme side, I cannot see how a nine month fetus, a day before it will be born, can still be considered a cluster of cells and be given the same moral weight as a cluster of cells. In later term pregnancy, we have all body parts formed, a fully functioning brain, consciousness and the ability to feel pain. I cannot see it plausible to hold up a cluster of cells and then hold up a nine month fetus and say they are the same. There is a high possibility that in later term pregnancies, the fetus can survive outside the mother's womb. If it can survive outside of the mother, then it should be considered a distinct moral agent. Would you then say that viability is the best answer, as it is the middle ground? You could say it's the middle ground, but it is by no means the best answer. The problem with the moderate pro-choice side is that, if we compare a 23-week fetus to a 24-week fetus, there is not much difference, yet they have a completely different moral status. One is considered a living being, and the other is considered a cluster of cells that can be terminated. This does not seem right. Yes, I understand. Also, it needs to be stated that even if one does not consider an early fetus a human being, it is still something special, something that will unquestionably turn into life. Here, we can lean on the potentiality argument. Even if you do not consider this a life, it has the full potential to become a life, and so should be given more moral weight than just a cluster of cells. Good point. Okay, before we finish, I think it's worth looking at the social implications that abortion has and see if it is worthwhile. Putting aside the debate on when life starts, does the availability and acceptance of safe abortions benefit or hinder society? I would say benefit. Why? I would argue that there are cases where abortion is definitely worthwhile. Consider a girl who has been the victim of a rape that has led to a pregnancy. As this was against her will, she should have every right to terminate the fetus and not have to go through the whole pregnancy as a constant reminder of the abuse she had endured. I see. Also, consider severe deformities or illnesses that can be detected very early in pregnancy. By allowing abortion, these beings do not have to go through a life of pain and misery. Abortion also helps with population control. And of course, less unwanted children in the world means less poverty, less crime, and less abandoned or neglected children. Okay, but would you honestly go into a child care home or a child hospital and say, sorry kids, if it was my way, I would have terminated you all in the womb? Well, obviously no, I wouldn't, but nonetheless, it does not change the fact that certain pregnancies can bring more negative than positive into the world. Hmm. I would also like to argue that even if abortions were prohibited and made illegal, desperate women will still find a way to have them done. Only this time, they will be going to back alley abortionists. These people will perform abortions in unsafe, unclean environments that will put the woman's life at risk. 
This is what you will do if you restrict the choice for women. You will force them into dangerous situations to get their abortions, which can in fact cause more pain and suffering and death. If abortions are kept safe, legal and available, they will be clean and they will minimise any further health problems. I understand your points, but you need to appreciate there is an estimated 40 to 50 million abortions a year worldwide. This is a lot of potential lives being terminated. Consider how many great people would have been terminated, how many great minds, how many doctors, scientists, inventors have been terminated. Statistically, the more people, the more geniuses, and the more geniuses, the more of our big problems are solved, and the further we develop as a species. Abortion allows us to kill our own species, and I think inevitably holds back mankind as a whole. Interesting. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what are your thoughts? Where do you lie on the pro-choice, pro-life spectrum? When do you consider a fetus alive? And what is needed to be a living human being? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care and we'll see you all soon. Bye bye.